Hello, hi everybody, and welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? What's going on? What's new in the hood? Hey, how's everyone doing these days? I'm doing okay. You know, life is okay. We still have COVID, which is not okay, but it is what it is. I am just super happy to be here. I'm pumped. I feel like this is my little safe zone when stuff happens to me. I like to come on here and just see. As you can see, I did something different with my background because, as you know, it is almost Halloween. And if you know me personally, you know that I love Halloween. But yeah, like I was saying, Halloween is my favorite time of year. I love it so much. It just makes me so happy. I always decorate my house, give out gifts to the kids, give out little goodie bags to my friends' babies and kids and stuff. I just love Halloween so, so much. It is my favorite time of year. So yeah, I decided to decorate. I hope you guys like it. I'll probably add some more stuff up here. I wanna get a backdrop, but I really just like this little setup. I'm actually thinking of painting the back of this black so things really stand out more. Um, we'll see. See how good, how I feel about that, you know? If I even wanna do it, cause I hate painting. So yeah, I have a good story today. It's an older one. It's from 1956, so it's, it's a bit older, nothing too crazy. Um, it, it Actually, it's really old because it's born in 2021. So yeah, and like I said, this is my safe space. I'm happy to be here. Um, lots of crazy stuff going on in my life. Not really crazy, just people being bipolar and that's about it. And if you're bipolar and you're going through something, don't take it out on your family members. You know what I mean? Like ask for help, get some help, don't judge. One of my biggest things is just blowing up on somebody without telling them exactly what's going on. Like if you were gonna say that you were dealing with stuff and then like the person didn't respect that, then there's a problem. If you just attack somebody for no apparent reason because you're bored, get a life. That is just, a, that's a little side note. I'm venting, I got shit going on, you know, they're pissed off at people. But let's get into this story. So today, I didn't even introduce myself. So for you guys who don't know me, my name is Joan McLean. I am here every Tuesday and Thursday to bring you guys a true crime that has happened where? Here in Canada. And today we were talking about a good one. Today we are talking about Peter DeMorto. He is, he's just a bad guy. He was a murderer. He does stuff. He has a kind of a sad story, but he was one of the forced people to be um, put to death in New Brunswick. So that was a pretty cool fact. Not really that cool, but it is what it is. So let's get into it. Let's get into the Peter story. Peter story. So again, like the last couple times, I am going to be starting with my eyes. I really like doing that. I I just, just the fallout and stuff. And today I'm going to do a super simple look. I don't want to do anything crazy. Stuff to do later today. I'm going to hang out with my mom and stuff. So, you know, I don't want the craziest eye makeup ever and then going out in town. And if you know when you film, you usually have to put on a lot of makeup so it can be really seen so I really don't want to look that cakey if you know what I mean so Peter was born in Budapest Hungary to a very wealthy family he had money unfortunately in World War II his family and him became um like famished lost everything everything like that just because of what was going on in World War II so he was very he lost everything, which it sucks due to the communist government. Let's just get this blending away. I always find when I try to put like tan colors on my eyes, they turn out orange, but that's whatever. So in 1956, at the age of 23, Peter immigrated to Canada. He was among 200,000 immigrants who escaped the country after a suspicion that Hungary revolution was about to happen. So he escaped, came to Canada and thought, you know what, I'm going to stop my life over. In 1967, Peter married Chris Christina Ferrier, an Australian born model. So, you know, good for him. You know, that's a that's a catch if you ask me. They had a daughter, Adri Audrey, Adrina, I can't read today, together 
but then they met, but then the mayor became strained and on 18 Jul- July 18, 1973, a 33-year-old Christina was found murdered, bludgeoned to death in the garage of the family home in Mississauga, Ontario. I'm gonna do like this crazy eye look with orange and stuff and then I realized it didn't have any lashes. And I had places to be. So, <laughs> by 1985, Peter was convicted of other charges. He had a fiance, Lisa Rose. Peter was charged with murder. Oh my God, what am I doing in my life, everyone? So, Peter was charged with murder of his wife, Christina, and in 18, July 18th, 1973, at their home, in Mississauga, Ontario. He was subsequently trialed for the murder and by lawyers, his lawyers was Edward Greensnap and Joseph. I fucked this up right off the bat. <laughs> I didn't want it to be this dark. Uh, let me show how to wipe it away. So it was one of the largest, largest, longest prison Oh my God, why can't I speak today? One of the longest trials ever in Canadian history. Um, He was convicted on the 6th of December, 1975 and arranged for the murder of and sentenced to imprisonment for life. So that's again, if you guys are new to my channel or not, that is only 25 years in jail. And if you're lucky, you can get parole before that. Most of the time people can't or they just don't even bother trying because... Why bother try, right? Amazon guy came and my dog just lost it. So, so he was um, sentenced to life imprisonment. So that is life imprisonment. Nothing ex- really to say there. I'm off my game today, folks, ladies and gents. There was two primary witnesses, including a so-called Mr. X who was hooded to protect his identity. They didn't want to give his identity away. He was one of the eyewitnesses. And if you're new here, eyewitnesses aren't always the best. Just because they think they saw someone who might have looked like that one guy doesn't mean that it was actually him. There's lots of people out there who look a lot alike. So I find that happens a lot in these stories. There's eyewitnesses. They say the person did it. And then it turns out it wasn't them. So there was the eyewitness. Throughout the trial, later identified as Gala Vogo, who testified that Peter was hired. A, he tried to hire a hitman named The Duck. Later identified as a small town criminal named Amir. So he at first was going to hire a hitman to kill his wife. But when that didn't work out, he had to do it himself. Just some. Some green under my eyes. So since that didn't work out, he had to, like I said, hire somebody else himself to... He wanted to hire somebody else to kill his wife and then was like, eh, no one's going to probably do it. I might as well do it myself and murder my wife because I don't want to be with her anymore. And to me, if you don't want to be with your significant other anymore, just leave. You don't need to kill someone just because... You don't want to be with them anymore. Let them walk free. It's not that hard. That's what I have to say. So he was originally going to hire a hitman. That didn't work out. So he was like, I'll do it myself, like I said. The other significant witness was Peter's former friend and police informant, Casper. Casby? Casabay? Casabay? I can't read. I can't do anything today. Who testified... That the defendant who tried to hire to murder the wife, um, that he had tried to hire and murder the wife and that he knew about it. The prosecutor's case was aided by tapes recorded by um, uh, his best friend and police informant of conversations with Peter after his wife's murder. During the trial, it was revealed that the husband and wife... That the husband and wife may each have been plotting to murder the other to collect a $1 million insurance policy. Peter did not testify, but maintained his innocence. So, 
it was looking like they both wanted to murder each other so that they could have kept, got a million dollars. And nowadays, a million dollars isn't that much. To me, I need a lot more to kill my husband. I need a couple of million. I need my house to be paid off. I need a lot to kill him. I'm not going to do it just for $1 million. So in 1974, the Canadian government requested extradition for Hungary for Amir, who was a suspect in the physical murder of um, Christina de Moore. He was never found because he was like, I'm getting out of here, boys. No one's going to be able to find me. I am not sticking around for this if I was, if I was a criminal. I would do the same. I would dip so fast, no one would be able to find me. So they requested that he would be sent to Canada for the trial because they believed that's where he was and they just never found him. So they were like, okay, whatever, we'll just move on. Um, he was never found. News reports indicated that the duck had died in Hungary in 1975. So this is the guy that um, Peter was originally going to hire to murder his wife. But it just, you know, he wasn't able to figure that one out. He didn't, he wasn't able to get him in to murder him from Hungary. And they wanted him to come testify that, yeah, this guy did hire me to kill his wife. And who knows, maybe he would get on the stand and be like, and she also hired me to kill him. But he died. So he died the year after. So there was no way of them testifying or getting anything from him. In 18... 18. In 1983, while living at a convictions hallway halfway house, Peter was charged with planning and kidnapping, murdering of the son of the cousin who had been taking care of his and his wife's daughter. He was like, might as well go up with a bang. I really don't care at this point. I'm going to jail for the rest of my life. Might as well try to get everyone I possibly can murdered and killed. So he was charged with trying to kill him um, as well as his financial affairs. So he's like, you know, these guys seem broke just because they just wanted to kill everyone for money. He attended to have this individual kidnapped to gain money and then have him killed. So it was kind of like whatever money the guy got, he was just going to kill him anyways. Peter was convicted in July 1985 while imprisonment prison and gave a second life sentence. So that one was added on on top of the life sentence he already had. So he's just, you know, reeling and dealing life sentences. Got his second life sentence for that one. And then he, so now he has two life sentences. Um, I do believe they don't stack in Canada. You can't go one after the other. So he just had one life sentence. See if he was going to get parole. Probably won't. And he was also charged with arson in 1983 and connection with the family's home in Missouri and in 1988 he was charged with planning to kidnap and murder the daughter of his lawyer uh Toby resulting in two additional life sentences so this guy just didn't care at this point he's like yeah I will I'm going to jail for the rest of my life uh, I'm gonna burn down my house see if I get some money there that didn't work got caught and then he's like, okay, well, I'll kidnap my lawyer's daughter because he's clearly rich because he's a lawyer. Oh, that didn't work because I got caught. And he's like, well, what else can I do? So he tried to do two kidnapping and murder things. He murdered his wife. And then he was going to burn down his house so he would get insurance money. Like, this guy was just on a new level and he just didn't, he didn't care. He was like, might as well go out with a bang. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Might as well just try and see if I could get away with as much as possible. And I will just be kidnapping and murdering as many people as I want. But not actually because I am never actually going to be able to go through with it. Like he, So he murdered his wife, who was also trying to murder him. So that's kind of a weird story. And then he tried to murder and kill his own daughter which isn't good. And then he tried to murder and kill his 
lawyer's son, which isn't good. And then he was going to burn down his house for money. Like this guy just has no concept of anything. He's like, I'm going to do it. And that's it. In May 2006, a judge ordered Peter to provide DNA samples to the country's DNA data bank because this guy seems to not, <coughs> damn, seems to not care or have any remorse for anything. So if he did ever get let out, had a bit of a laughing, coughing attack. So, so they wanted to give him, get his DNA for the data bank. Um, as law enforcement were collecting the data from prisoners, Peter had refused to allow a sample to be taken. What is the odds? Because if he did get out, guaranteed this guy would try to commit something else. He was got a bunch of stuff up his sleeve. While in prison, Peter had suffered a stroke and a heart attack, and he uh, has been in chemotherapy, so he also had cancer. So the, the dude was just, you know, whatever he was trying to do, kill people, do whatever. It wasn't working for him, and then, you know, he kind of got what he deserved by... All this stuff that happened to him in jail, which is good. I always like when they get sick and die in jail because, like, I know I've met a couple nurses who work in jails and they have to be so mean to these guys, which is great. So they do not care. You're not supposed to be friendly with them. You're not supposed to be whatever. A lot of the people who go to jail or, like, go to the nurses um, to get help or they're just because they don't want to be in jail right now so they like eat a flip-flop or eat a shoe or eat whatever they want just to get out so the nurses and them have to be so strict where they do not become friendly with them because you don't want to give people in jail the wrong idea that they might like you or something like that so you just got to be a complete dick <sighs> Little shine. I, I realize I used to love highlighter and like doing my makeup all the time. And now I'm good just leaving the house doing foundation. Peter is now serving a life sentence. Uh, serving his term in a medium security bath institution in Bath, Ontario. Da, 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 da. So medium means, you know, he's probably ain't going to do shit anymore. He's getting to that age. He's getting old this is like my favorite lipstick is it maybelline it's l'oreal it just gives you like your lips but better it's l'oreal ferris nude in 800 so i say it almost does kind of look like charlotte tailbelly's um pillow talk but goes on so nicely. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Can't say enough good things about it. You know? In May 2006, he had an interview with CBC. Was that who it was? Yeah, CBC. And he just straight up said, like, I'll probably be in jail for the rest of my life. I'm not going to get out anytime soon. Blah, 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 blah. That's what happens when you conspire to kill and kidnap how many kids and stuff like that. So he just straight up admitted, like, I'm probably not going to get out anytime soon. And was like, so that's that. And he's still in there to this day. And in March 2019, it was reported that Peter filed for parole again. And the parole again, more than 20 years after his day parole was revoked. But the parole board denied releasing him, which is like, thank God, because this guy was... I don't think this guy, even though he had a stroke and a heart attack and he's probably not in his, like, best health, he's still not a nice dude. You know what I mean? Nobody likes you, Peter. Nobody likes you. Well, Peter's trial kind of went down in history for being one of the longest ones in Canada. Uh, Peter's story and trial served as the basis for a 1978 film, I Miss You, Hugs and Kisses also called Drop Dead Dearest and Left for Dead, directed by Maury Makowitz, whoever that is. Um, he figured the movie named Charles played a Dr. Donald Phillip. His wife was played by some other chick no one heard of. Um, and it was listed as Video Nasty. So the mortal trial was subjected in the stories and in the movies and this whole story thing that he did 
about trying to murder his wife and his wife trying to murder him went down in like history in the Canadian history for being one of the craziest love triangle cases you know he just got to her first he got to her first I'm gonna give you guys my final thoughts I know this look isn't anything crazy it's just an everyday going out type of situation um I enjoyed it it's just something simple light different little pop of color kind of thing like that you know so my final thoughts about this story was I got it wrong this isn't the story I thought I was doing I don't know why I thought I was doing the one about the New Brunswick case but um again they got this guy pretty quick they had two eyewitnesses but again eyewitnesses aren't always the best but it is what it is so they had two eyewitnesses they didn't get the dude who was supposed to be the one that killed, tried to like get paid to kill her but he's dead too so I just think this this story could have went either way um, I'm sure that if he didn't kill her, it sounded like she was going to kill him. So we might've been talking about Christina instead of Peter and how she murdered her husband kind of thing. It seemed like if you love that person for that long, why bludgeon the head in, you know, like chill boys, you don't need to do that. It just seems a little crazy that like instantly I'm just going to smash, smash, smash your head in and then just call it a day. Like, oh, she's dead. Like, how do you like lie about that? But whatever. And again, they got him. He went to jail. He kept trying to do stuff. He's probably never going to get out because he's a high risk person. Um, they do make mistakes, but I doubt this guy will since it was a pretty like crazy case. And then he was like, oh, I'm also going to try to kidnap all these fucking people too because my life's over. So that's that. Again, I know this was a little bit shorter, a little quicker type of story, but it still was something a little interesting. So let me know what you guys think below. Make sure you guys give this thing a like and subscribe. And there's a little bell down below that if you click that, it will tell you every time I'm posting a new video. So please go like and subscribe that. Everything you guys do means the world to me. I like coming on here and just venting and talking and telling you a little story about somebody who got murdered or somebody who got kidnapped or somebody who's missing or a weird law that Canada had. Um, I just love being on here and thank you guys for watching and participating and in watching these and enjoying it with me. It means the world to me. I really appreciate everything. Let me know down below if there's anyone you want to do. Again, follow my socials. I'll link them right here. They'll also be linked down below. And please, please, please like and subscribe and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Oh, I also forgot I'm sitting at 125 subscribers. To most of you guys, you're going to be like, that's nothing. To me, that means a lot. If I get 25 more subscribers, I'll be doing another giveaway. So please, guys, get your families liking and subscribing. Get everyone liking and subscribing. I'll be doing another giveaway. I don't care where you guys live. If you're in Canada, the States, uh, the UK, wherever, just like and subscribe and I will get you guys in with that giveaway and I'll be sending the gift. It's going to be a new hoodie that I'm going to be releasing. So please like and subscribe and get me to that 150 followers. All right. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.